Hello friends, myself Ankit Saladia. Uh, last week, due to Easter holiday, I wasn't at home, so I couldn't get some time to make another video. Uh, this week, I would be talking about effective tips for learning the German language. Here, I won't be separating the German language for English taught or German taught course, as I would be talking about the whole language learning process from A1 till C1 level, or I can say in general, what you have to do to learn the German language effectively. German language is one of the difficult language. You can say it's not that easy. The grammar rules are too complicated. There are many sets of uh, articles which you need to remember. And according to that article, the grammar is changing in all different cases. And that makes German one of the difficult language to learn. But uh, I would say it's not impossible when you have the basics clear in the language department and then uh, when you do the right practice as per the time, you will eventually master the language. So I would be uh, giving my experience from my side, what I have done in my language learning process in 2015 and 16. And also after that, because uh, language learning is not a one-time thing. You have to learn every day, every single uh, time when you speak to a German people, you are learning something new. So it would be a long journey for you. But uh, in the beginning, uh, for your study, for your work, when you need to have a certain set of uh, requirements which you have to fulfill. And for that thing, I would be sharing my uh, effective tips and experience. So when you start learning the language, you are a completely beginner. You don't know any single word in German. Maybe you start with hello, like it's uh, similar to hello or hi in English language. So when you start with this kind of uh, zero level in German, everything would be difficult, but as per common European framework of references for the language learning, uh, when you have Evan, that means you have to do certain kind of things, like you have to introduce yourself in German, uh, you can do some basic conversation, maybe you can understand the announcement at the bus station or railway station. So th these kind of things are covered in Evan in A2 level basic shopping, going to a restaurant, maybe visiting a doctor. So they have divided every single level according to the skills which you have to get at the end of the, and the level. So level learning maybe in, in B1, B2, you would be more independent speaker. In A1 level, you would need some help from some other guys. So when you start learning the language, you always start with the alphabets in the German language because uh, alphabets are more or less same in, in, in German language, but uh, the pronunciation is a little bit different. So when you start with learning the language, first of all, you have to learn the alphabets very perfectly because as per the alphabets, your word pronunciation uh, would be depending on. So if you know the German alphabet, if you have started learning the language already, so you know A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Epsilon, Z. So if you know this alphabet, this pronunciation, it will be easier for you to read or maybe speak a new word. If you don't know uh, this alphabet perfectly, maybe you are mistaking E, the German E with the English E, or maybe vice versa, or maybe you are not speaking H, the English H as German H, then you would be making mistakes in your pronunciation. So I'll learn the alphabets perfectly. Um, but in my time, I learned the alphabets using the song A, B, C, D, A, F, K, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, P, V, Q, R, S, T, U, P, V, X, X, O, P, L, Z, O, V. So by this song, I remember the alphabets very perfectly. So whenever, uh, if you remember in the Evan exam, you have to bookstore B and um, maybe you have to spell out your name. In, in German. So in those critical situations, when you have started learning the language, you have to pronounce it, you know, maybe spell out your complete name, maybe my son name is Eladia. It's, it can be a longer, it can be difficult as per your name. So according to uh, the Evan exams, you have to spell out your uh, 
whole name in, in German alphabet. So in that case, this alphabet song, or maybe when you have the, learned the alphabet perfectly, it would be really helpful. Uh, so for the perfect pronunciation, I would start from the basic. And there are some certain kind of, uh, should say, word groups uh, where you have different pronunciation. Uh, I think I would make another video for it. I have like uh, almost 12 to 14 slides as I started teaching even in A2 level uh, during the start of pandemic when I had too much time as I was not uh, working full time because of the cold cyber and cold cyber and so on. Cold cyber is a kind of thing um, from Germany where you don't need to work, uh, but you can still have your job at your current employer and then, then you will get some 70% of your salary. These kind of uh, arrangements are there to prevent the job loss. So at that time I had taught uh, even an A2 level to few students. And in that time I had prepared some, some PDFs. So maybe I will try to upload it in, in on my website or somewhere. So learn alphabet perfectly, learn the basic pronunciation, learn the basic uh, pronunciation of uh, some special word groups. And then you are good to go to read any any word or any 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 new sentence without uh, making any problem or maybe your dialect wouldn't be too much influencing influencing the, the way of your speaking. Uh, the next thing I would be say uh, the sentence structure uh, in German when you learn from a proper German teacher or maybe from a German trainer which had uh, which. Uh, have some profile training from German uh, German Institute like Max Müller Bowen in India uh, or maybe anywhere any other country. There you don't start with the sentence, but you start with the introduction. So when you learn introduction, you know that my name is Ankit. Uh, we heist do, pass marks do. So these are the sentences which are basic, but these are the sentence structure which you would be using for the rest of your life whenever you are speaking German. So when you learn the sentence, then maybe keep the structure in your mind. Uh, we heist do so here what is we what is heist what is do why they are using this particular sequence why not heist we do so this particular sentence structure are your basis or in german in english your basic or your 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 pioneer skills so when you master this basic sentence structure it would be easier for you to form the difficult structure which you will be learning in in the in the higher level like b1 b2 and also in c1 level so in a1 and a2 whatever you learn the basic structure it should be clear why it is like that why why not in another way uh, like uh, there are some 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 sentences like when you join two sentences with but in german it's aber or when you are giving some reason uh, why because of that while so this kind of sentence structure should be clear in your mind. So it will be also helpful for you to score good good grades in the German language exam. And also it would be impacting your overall learning process. Uh, was one very important thing I would be said, do not use Google Translate or any other translate for the uh, sake. Uh, when you start translating any word, like uh, the basic word would be wasa. So in, in English it would be water. When you remember vasa, it would be uh, vasa and vata. It's it for you. It's in the beginning. It's easier. But when you are in the in the higher level, like you started with uh, ten words, which you know from English to German or German to English, uh, in in difficult levels you need to learn hundred words. So then you need to remember the hundred English words. Next level you need to learn thousand words. Then you need to remember thousand English words with the German words. So. At some point, it won't be possible for you to remember all the words in your native language or in the English language, whatever language you are using as a medium. The one very important thing or one very useful thing which I uh, had to, I, I learned from the, the German uh, course, uh, they are not using any single language because in Germany, when I started my A2, I learned even in India. And then in Germany, when I started uh, with my language learning from A2 level, they were not using English language. They were not using any other language because they are well students from all over the world, from, from Afghanistan, from Russia, from, uh, from, from Latin America, Spain, and so on and so on. So there was no common language. And they, were, they have some methods like they, they will use only German to teach German. So you don't know the German, but in the beginning it can be troubleful, but at somehow at some point you would be encouraged to speak in German. So that's a good part. 
when you learn from a german teacher or german native teacher or maybe any other teacher but uh, he should be able to use the german language only for teaching the german if he has to use the google translator maybe he will just give you okay uh, this is uh, Shrift or the Zoas or the Cooley uh, or the Pen and so on. When you use translation, it wouldn't be useful for you in the long term. So stop translating. Instead, what I, what you can do when you uh, have some new word in front of you, just Google it, but not the normal Google. You can also use the normal Google. It would be fine because there would be some dictionary website in the German language itself. They will show you or, or give you the basic explanation in the German itself. Maybe it would be helpful for you or you can just use the Google images. Uh, maybe this uh, bottle is Wasserflasche in German language. So uh, just search Wasserflasche in Google image and then you will get some, some images from bottles, water bottles. So you know, okay, Wasserflasche means water bottle and then it would be easier to remember and you it would be stored in your memory for the longer time so stop translating um, another wrong thing which i have learned from many other students uh, uh, during my learning process they were mugging, mugging up the rules and regulation uh, to remember daily tasks of the word or maybe using which kind of endings but like prefix suffix they had to use a trend bar like uh, separable verbs and separable non-separable verbs so they were using the tricks or maybe the tricks which are 80 to 90 percent accurate but they are not the standard grammar rules they are just tricks so you can remember you would be true most of the time but it's not uh, what is a real way so here, when you bug up the rules in grammar, like when it's, there is an E and ending uh, suffix, uh, you have to do this kind of uh, uh, changes in your sentence and so on. So is it, it is good. With that, you can, you can maybe learn or maybe pass your exam easily, but in the long run, it's not that well helpful because you have to speak fluently when you are speaking with someone you wouldn't be thinking okay i'm speak i'm going to speak sn okay with sn is with en ending okay uh, then i have to use this noun or this uh, article blah 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 that wouldn't be working out so don't do it don't do it instead of just uh, learn the sentence read the sentence whatever is it um, what is the real grammar? Why is it like that? Maybe when you understand why it is nominative, why it is accusative, why it is dative, it would be easier for you to make the sentence correctly. And in the long run, when you are done with your seven examination in the German environment, if you use any wrong article, it's not a crime. You can use the wrong article. Do German also do it? Sometimes it's a new word. They don't know the real article, but don't mug up the rules instead of just focus on learning the new words new way of making the sentences and maybe uh, making the sentences correctly so it would be easier for you in the long run when you're speaking you don't have to remember okay i am just about to speak this word and for this word uh, in this table from five to six okay i have to use so it, it won't work you are not a robot Otherwise, you can say I, I can I can have this process in the background and I can speak in the front. It it wouldn't work like that. So better do not mug up any rule. Know them. It's nice. Okay, uh, the name of buns are normally masculine, so it's easier. But uh, with e n ending or with t ending or blah blah blah, it would make your life difficult. As per my experience, you can do it, but uh, at the long run, you will find out that it's not the it's not worth it. So better. Do not uh, mug up the rules and, and other the shortcut tricks. In the long cut tricks, it's fine, but like do not use any shortcuts. The long cut trick, I would say, remember the noun with the article. It sounds difficult. It sounds too much work to do, but it would be easier for you to do or use your German grammar 99% perfectly. Uh, I have some example, men, M-A-N, men in English, uh, a gentleman, and the German would be man, M-A-N-N. -N. So 
you can just remember man, 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 and it will be stored in your memory. But I would recommend to you to learn like this. You you have this this noun man in English, and then you have this noun in German. It should be der man, man, der man. So here it would be easier for you in the long run to remember the noun, the right there, the last article. And when you know the right there, the last article. And then you know the right uh, case, nominative, dative, accusative, or genitive. Genitive is not that uh, popular or that it's not in the use that much. So you just need to remember these three now uh, these three cases. And when you have the article and the right cases, then your right, your article would be hundred percent grammar pro. There wouldn't be any error. Derman, die Frau, das Mädchen, and so on. So you will remember this now with the article itself and it would be making your work really really easy and another thing you can do here uh, when you mm, learn some new words like auto is car in german an article is thus auto but normally uh, you use car for driving driving so uh, there is a there is a group of words so ich fahre mit dem auto so fahre mit dem auto so mit dem auto you can remember it like this with the sentence so it would be another step further you know mit dem auto fahren auto nicht, nicht mit das auto fahren mit dem auto fahren so it wouldn't be it would be in your memory for a longer time so whenever you use auto mit dem auto fahren mit dem auto fahren so it would be it, it's kind of a trick but uh, it's uh, it's helpful because there are so many articles, there are like uh, uh, verb, uh, some some things like autos or maybe train with them, so and so either. There are so many other, other things which you can remember by using them often. Like uh, if you use it 10 times and then the 11th time, you, it would be automatic. Okay, mit dem auto fahren. There cannot be any other case. There cannot be mit the auto foreign there cannot be meet their auto foreign there would be always meet them auto foreign so it would be like this these are the common phases like it would be it it, it would be in use for your side at least 10 to 20 times in a month so this kind of verbs this kind of sentences have to be in your memory so you can uh, use them perfectly the next thing uh, make a list of new words uh, without having any translation on the side just write them uh, thus auto uh, water um, uh, the man the frau um, das wasser and so on and then uh, event like what do you say uh, like once in a week or once in a month just go go through them and and just try to check it uh, how many uh, new words you remember perfectly because whenever you write new words that means you have already searched it in google you have seen it in 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 person then you know this word or this noun um, when you when you had this uh, in your in your dictionary or verb, but in your list so next time you read them and then you can just just like read it again and again every once in a week or once in a month so you you can always increase your vocabulary and once you have the uh, enough vocabulary and, and the basic sentence structure, you can make so many sentences with them and then it would be improving your speaking in general, also your writing. Uh, this would be an, uh, one possibility expanding your vocabulary, but uh, to learn new words, you have to get them from somewhere. And, and to get them from somewhere, uh, after finishing A1 or A2, I would say in A1 and A2, I would be focusing just on the basic grammar. I would be just focusing on the right pronunciation. I would uh, just focusing on the sentence structure. Once I'm finished with A1, I would say also A2. After A2, I would be starting to listening radio. I would be watching German TV shows. I would be reading German newspaper. If you don't have access to German newspaper in your country, Maybe just go to any any random German website. Uh, all the German website have said uh, punct, uh, dot de extension like in India dot in. So whenever you go to dot de extension website, it would be most of the time in German. Uh, also, just search in some random newspaper companies in 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 Germany, and then you can find their online version available. And just go through them. 
read the articles uh, and maybe highlight the new words. Uh, if you have uh, learned something about Sneeman, there's Sneeman, which is here. Sorry, need not that. Here, there, there is Sneeman, Snowman. So when you talk about, when you read the article about snowman in December, then you will highlight some different words. Snee is equal to snow, whatever things you see in those article, and then maybe just put it in, the, in your list. Watching German movie would be kind of entertainment for you. And also you will learn indirectly as uh, best way to master any language would be immersion. The first thing is like, go to that country where this language is being spoken. Like for German, it would be Germany or Austria or also part of Switzerland. You can come here, you can be surrounded by German speaking people. And then in the end, you will improve your German language. Second thing would be uh, watching TV, watching radio, watching German movies, uh, also listening to German songs. And this way you would be immersed in the language from all of the site. Uh, once you have this influx of German words, German sentences, German pronunciation, German accent, um, now you are good to go to speak in the real environment. And maybe you are, when you are learning in the class, you have to speak maybe also in A1 or A2, but uh, it would be limited. And uh, you can try to use your speaking with your, your language buddy in your class or also from internet, you can find someone with whom you can practice your language speaking. But after B1, I would say I would intensify this effort of speaking German with some other guy, some German, speak, German speaker, or maybe my classmate. Uh, for that, I would be suggesting, uh, if possible, you can come to Germany on your language visa, learning visa, where you can learn language from Germany itself. If it, if it is not possible, you can take part in Duolingo events. Duolingo events is a kind of a concept where a host like me, I'm hosting even every Saturday. So in those particular events, there would be a standard agenda. Like in my event, we always do discussion on, on any set of certain topics, uh, which are most of the time difficult for, because I'm, I'm doing it for the advanced speaker. But you can find your level, beginner, advanced, intermediate, whatever you are at, at, as of now, you can talk part on the, in those events. Uh, most of the time it's free. But there are also some paid events, but it's not that expensive. You can just give three to four euros or so on, and up to seven euros, I think. Uh, you can take part in this one or two hour meeting where there would be a professional trainer uh, moderating the event. They will teach you something. They will, they will give you some speaking task. And at the end of your day, you would be improving your speaking. So you take part in Duolingo events. There are some other platforms, uh, meetups, uh, groups or Facebook groups where some common interest uh, of learning the German language is there and then maybe you can find some other people who can help you out in your speaking maybe free or maybe in, in exchange of some money. Uh, find a tandem partner. Uh, there are some app tandem uh, app on, on Play Store or maybe you can just Google it or use this uh, this social media groups to find someone to exchange, maybe maybe you can teach them English or your mother tongue in in exchange of your German speaking practices. So talk in German with Germans. If you don't have access to German people, then maybe talk in German with some other guy or girl who knows German speaking. But the main thing is talk in German whenever you can. It would be boosting your what is your confidence when you have to really use the language when after coming to Germany or when you are already in Germany, but you have to give your first interview in German. So at the time you cannot do everything in like, okay, in one week I would be fluent in German. It wouldn't be happening like that. It would be taking one or two years of time. So just start from the beginning in A1, A2, maybe you can use your classroom as for your experiment. And after that, B1 and B2, you can just explore the internet, explore your local community where you can use your, mm -hmm. my lips are to write, your German speaking skill. Uh, yeah, I think that's the thing which I have written in my two pages. Uh, yeah, 
uh, you can also use this uh, Duolingo app, which is, I think, known to many. There is another app, Babel, and there are Buzu, there are Lee, there are plenty of apps available on Play Store for free or maybe in exchange of some, some small money. Use them when you are going to bed. 10, 20 minutes of uh, German exercise would be helpful for you, keeping the real German in your mind all the time. Uh, when another another thing which I was doing during my time in India and also in Germany when I was learning the German language, I was writing at least a text in two days. So I remember when I was learning English in my school, uh, my teacher was giving me tasks like write about my friend, my best friend, my father, my family, and so on. So these kind of basic topics were given to us, and then we need to make a a text, maybe for two hundred, three hundred words, or maybe one page or something. So I, I started writing this kind of text without uh, the homework. It was not homework from my teacher. I was writing on my own and I was giving to my German teacher for checking it. And every time uh, when I give it to her, I wasn't using any, any, any app or something. I was just writing it whatever I can. At the time, even in even level, I started writing a few letters. Uh, the very basic mistake which I did uh, because I was just listening to my teacher and she was saying Zupa. Super is like super in English, and I was understanding this super. Super is like soap in German. So it's like more say, like similar, similar sounds for me. And then I didn't check it on any, anywhere on internet or somewhere. So I write it uh, uh, some super, a super like soup with uh, the real meaning of super in my text. And then I give it for correction and then say, okay, super. And then, then so this thing would be in your memory for a longer time. When you when you get it corrected by someone, someone experienced with the language, it would be helpful for you to identifying your mistake in the early phase so you do not repeat or do not do the same kind of mistake all the time for your higher level B1, B2, C1 and whatever in your work life. So write at least a text once in a week if you cannot do it daily or maybe your teacher cannot check it daily. Uh, but write it two three texts per week and maybe you get it corrected by the your german teacher or maybe someone else uh, who who knows the language very well it would be really good for you uh, make a make a habit of reading german articles on deutsche welle dw.com or dw.de website there is a special newsletter for german learner so there the articles are not too lengthy and the level is not that difficult and most of the time they have the what i would say uh, basic explanation of the new words in in picture form in in some basic german for german sentences but you will find it on dw.com or dw.de website uh, and there are online language courses available all over the internet just find the right course for you and do the practice for me the basic key or basic the most effective tips would be practice because when you just remember the language maybe you read the uh, language the language there are some books in the internet available like master the german in 30 days if you read this book in 30 days there wouldn't be any magic happening you have to use the language you have to practice the language you have to read the language and then at some point you would be mastering the language without any help or without any any smart equipment like handy a smartphone or laptop so for that you have to give a little bit time yeah i think uh, from my side that was the thing uh, like i would be say like do whatever you do do it regularly uh, to check it, uh, check check your uh, level on regular interval. In maybe you give some exam or you write some text and give it to your teacher. Do not give importance to just the exam part. Like if you have seen the go to even level exam, it's way too easy. But the even content which you have learned is more than the exam part. So whatever you learn in the A1 and A2 are the pillars for your B1, B2, and C1 level. In B1 and B2, 
there would be very less grammar topics. Most of the time it would be how to use them effectively, more, more standard way, not just uh, my name is Ankit, ich komme aus Indien, ich uh, bin engineer von Beru. So it would be for A1, but in B1 and B2 level, hallo Leute, ich bin Ankit Zellerdia, ich bin engineer, arbeite hier in Magdeburg seit uh, zwei Jahren. Uh, bin ich gerne verarbeitet, ich habe keine Kinder. So, in the B1 and B2 level, you would be just using the same kind of words, same kind of sentences in a more, more fluent way, I would say. So, that is my uh, podcast for uh, learning the language effectively, specifically for the German language. Uh, if you have some specific question on some specific methods which I have said or explained here in this video, just write it down in the comment section. I would be trying to make a video or maybe I would be writing a blog article. I have also a blog on, in, on internet, www.m4dmotors.in, where I post uh, not regularly, but at some point of time, like once in uh, two, three months, I post some article. So if I find it article worthy, where I need to give lots of references and some text uh, examples, and I would be writing it on my website. Otherwise, if it just it just needs some basic explanation orally, I would be making a video. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.